Hi winners, this is Mundan Raghavan. In this series, we are going to see the performance testing with JMeter. Considering this course, you may be from the existing functional testing background or you might be from the automation background or you might be freshly learning the performance testing from the scratch. In all the cases, we are going to learn the performance testing with the JMeter from the scratch, which means that we will be going each and every topic in detail, then we will try to create the performance testing test cases using the JMeter. First we will try to understand in this video what about the performance testing and what is JMeter and how to install it. Unlike functional requirements which are nothing but your normal business flow inside your web application, you need to do the performance testing. Why? Because it will be giving the confidence to the stakeholders or let's say the end users it will perform in any scenario when the load increases, when the user increases suddenly or it can be like a peak time or it can be like a shortage of your resources. Whatever might be the case, your application performing well and you will be having the limits or thresholds so that you can confidently tell my application will work until some condition are met. So that you will be having a, a lot confident in your application so that's the reason we will be doing the performance testing. If you tell performance testing it's very very high level that means that it is giving a very abstract information your application performs no matter what is the physical condition or let's say the the number of load that you get into your application. In order to understand more performance you will get into the different types of performance testing or let's say the the detailed information what do you mean actually by the performance. The first one will be the load which is a very normal one. That means you build your application considering in production or let's say in live you will be having almost let's say 100k users or let's say 1000 users or something like that. Basically you will be testing the functional flow by using the functional testing or automation testing. However you need to confirm that whatever the plan you had when you create the application for example 1000 users just to simulate the same event by creating the load or creating the virtual users to have the same load to make sure your application works for the thousand users. Here I use the term virtual users that means that you are not giving your application to exact thousand users you are virtually creating or simulating the users so that you will be having the load testing. The next one is test testing. As the name suggests you will be just giving this test to the application that means that in the peak workload you will be try to continue on the same load and it will build the stress so that you will come to know on what point your application breaks so that you can mention that stability point till that point your application works well with the given number of users or load. Next one soak testing as the name suggests it's something like a soak that means that you suddenly increases the workload beyond your plan for example more than 1000 users and see how your server behaves, how your memory utilization works, is there any program leaks happening so that you will be doing this soak testing. And next one spike testing. Again the name itself tells the meaning. That means that it's not about giving the load for a long time or giving the same kind of load. It is something like a within your peak hours you are creating the spike in the load so that your application goes to the top or let's say goes to the spike in the load level again it reduces at very suddenly. That means that your application is very stable to handle that spikes and scalability it is something like a cloud concept as well your application is just scalable so that when the load increases it scales automatically by itself. And volume the application might be same and the number of users might be the same but it tries to get more data into it. For example, your file uploads, your photos upload, your zip files upload, just to see the volume of data that follow through your application. These are the very high level again, because even inside the load testing, you will be having the different concept. For example, how long you continue the load, how many users, how they just build up the load, and what is the think time. There are a lot of terminologies we will be coming to know in this series. In general, now we are trying to understand Performance is the very abstract level. If you get into the next level, it will be the load, stress, soak, spike, scalability, volume and so on. And all these things can be discussed in our series and some of the area we actually do the hands-on. 
Now coming to the next part of this video, which is the J meter. There are a lot of other tools. I will just keep, uh, let's say, keep the idea to you. You can explore a lot of things. But we choose the J meter in this series. Why? Because the first reason it's a open source and second reason it's a Java so that you can use in any environment and any OS. It's a cross functional or let's say cross OS uh, platform. And after that, it has the UI, which means that you can record and playback. And the last and very powerful reason, it is in the field for long time and you have so much community and the documentation and let's say a lot of support from the team. So that if you have any issues, definitely you can assure that you will not be the first person facing that issue. So with that knowledge, we'll go to the J meter. J meter, as you know, it is a Apache framework or let's say Apache tool. And some points to be clarified here before we start with JMeter installation. JMeter, first of all, it's not a desktop application. JMeter is not something the cloud application. JMeter is just kind of tools and it is the Java jar files or let's say Java application that is wrapped into your, let's say some zip file. If you execute, it gives the UI. It does not mean that it is the desktop application. So in order to understand JMeter further, we will install and try to see more things in the coming videos. But as part of this video, we will try to install. When you try to install the JMeter, what are the things are required before you start the JMeter? Obviously, when in order to install the JMeter, you need to have the JMeter download, which is a zip file that we discussed. And JMeter, as you know that it is built over the Java, obviously you need to have the Java as well. Even though you have the Java, when you run the JMeter, so it will always try to see the system variable called Java Home. And in that path, whatever the value you have given Java Home, in that folder path, it will try to find the Java JDK or binary files. And Firefox browser, however, we will see it's only the Firefox or some Chrome browser can be used. But generally, JMeter will be used along with the Firefox browser so that you can use the record and playback when you do the JMeter test case creation. And apart from that, if you are from the functional or automation, just unlearn everything and come out of that area. It is totally different and you will be doing a lot of things in a different way, unlike our functional testing and automation testing. So with that, we will try to install the JMeter first. I will be sharing all these links so that you can download by yourself. Let's go to here and here you can see Apache JMeter requires 8 plus. That means that any Java version more than 8 and this will be the link where you can download any version more than 8. Even I would prefer to have Java 8 or 9. Probably you can download anything which is more than 8. So just to confirm, let's go to the system variables first because I already installed that. We will do in the reverse engineering way. Let's go to the environment variables and you can make it the user variables or the system variables. Basically, what does it mean? When you make the user variables, that means that when you log into your system, it's only available to you. It's not at the system level. But if you make the system level variables, that means that it is at the system. So no matter which user logged in in your system, everyone will be having the access or they will be having that environment variable. So in my case, let's go into the variable session. Look for Java home. So basically I have downloaded the Java. I kept in C program files, Java JDK 17.01 and I have mentioned the same variable name here. Just to confirm, just go to the C, go to the program files, Java, JDK 17 and bin folder. Here actually bin means binary file. So all the Java binary files will be kept here. So whenever JMeter tries to do some Java operation or when it needs some Java functionalities. So it will be looking into this path because it always looks for the Java home variable. In that variable, we saved this path in my system. So I will be giving this path. Next one, JMeter. So when you install the JMeter, you will be having a zip file in the download session. Then you will unzip it. Let's go to my PC. So I think better I will download just freshly. 
here you can see zip file if you are from the windows system download as a zip file if you are from linux background you can download the target or let's say tgz Then what are the other things? So Java Home we have set up and Java JDK is already there. Just to confirm the Java Home is working fine or not, go to the command terminal, type Java underscore Home. It's not recognized because we have typed the variable directly. Okay, fine. Let's type Java iPhone version. And here you can see the Java details, so that has been installed already. So actually we have checked whether Java is there or not, but just to check the Java home. Yes, we should be using the echo command. It's okay just to try the same thing. Here you can see Java home has been set and it is giving the value like a C program files Java JDK and we set up on the java home that's fine so coming back to the slide so java jdk has been downloaded java home is set jmeter zip file we have downloaded it's almost done and firefox browser so it's a straightforward firefox browser it's not there then just go to the browser look for firefox download firefox Firefox installer Yes, now we have the Firefox browser now. Okay, that looks cool. Close it. Now coming to the Apache JMeter, just go to the downloads. Extract all. Just make something standard area, such as like a C folder or program files. In my system, I will be just keeping into the C. Apache JMeter and here you can see this is again a Java program or let's say Java application and if you go into that you will be seeing all the like Java folders you will be just going to the binary folder and you will be seeing the let's say different files here so let me open the JMeter bat which is the batch file So here it's opening with some warning messages uh, which can be uh, considered in the later stage. Basically we should not be using the UI for all the time. 
just to create record and playback or let's say from normal scripting we will be using the UI part apart from that we will not be using the UI part and the server is running and if you go to the JMeter yes we have the JMeter here we have a lot of options here we are going to explore in the coming session each and every detail about the JMeter and now successfully we have installed everything that we require for the JMeter learning and first of all we have seen performance testing at the very basic level and we have seen the types of performance testing and we have seen why JMeter has been chosen and we have installed the JMeter for the JMeter we install the Java JDK and we set up the Java home system variable we install the Firefox browser just to listen to that browser just to record and play back inside the JMeter and we successfully open the JMeter even though it looks like a desktop application we open the jmeter.bat file which is the batch file inside our Java application the Java application is nothing but your JMeter folder so this is all about this video so thanks all thanks for watching and have a great day